Hey, it's Jesus Castillo from Ruby Guides, and in this video, you are going to learn about a particular coding challenge in Ruby that you might find in coding interviews. So let's have some fun, and uh, let's find out how you can solve this interview question challenge step by step. Let's do this. Okay, so what's the challenge? Well, there are the, a few different forms of the challenge. And uh, one of the basic ones, the, of the ones that's most easy to do, is to count the ones in the binary form of a particular number. In this case, you have 2048. But uh, this can be any other number. I just choose this name. I mean this number because it's actually my age. Okay, it is. <laughs> it's 33. So we can take any number. The first thing we need to do before we can count the ones in the binary form is what? Well, it's to get the binary form of the number. How do you th how do you do that? Well, Ruby is very nice because it allows you to use this 2S method, which if we use this by default, what we get is the string version of the same integer, right? The numbers are called integers. And where like when, when they are like this, they are called strings. You probably already know that, but I'm reviewing for more beginner people. So 2s means to a string, and what a lot of people don't know is that it takes one argument. What's the argument? The argument is the base. The base means how many digits are in this number system. So by default, this is 10, because this is called a decimal system. Decimal, there are 10 digits from zero to nine, but What's binary? Well, binary is one zero one zero one zero one 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 zero zero. It's only ones and zeros is what you, the computer uses, right? So if we want this binary form, we can do it like this, and there we go. That's the binary form for this number. And if I change the number, uh, we can do, for example. this number, we get a different pattern of one and zeros. Okay, so I'm going to name this binary so now that we know that we have the binary version of this number. So we, got, we have the first part. So always when you get a programming challenge, Remember that you can break it down into different steps, into different uh, smaller ch challenges or smaller problems that you can solve. And in this case, the first one is to get the binary form and then we can count the ones. So to count the ones, there are different ways that we can do this. One way is to take our binary form so we can use, for example, the count method. The count method takes an argument, and the argument is the thing you're looking for. So in this case, we have seven ones. If I go to original number, uh, which it was two, two, 2048, well, there is only one one, right? As you can see, and that's correct. So you can also change this and look for zeros. And we got 11 zeros in this particular number binary form, right? So that's the easy version of the challenge. The next version of the challenge, which is slightly different, is to also 
take this binary form, which means this and this is going to be the same, these first two lines of code. But instead of look, looking to count the ones, we want to find the longest uh, list of consecutive ones. So what do I mean by that? Well, if this number happens to be another, uh, another number, like let's do this one. You see that we have one, 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 one. So one, one, that's two in a row, two ones in a row. And here also two ones in a row. So now the question is find the longest streak or sequence of ones in the same form. So the longest is two because there is no more ones one after the other. If we had this, then the longest will be five, right? So that's what we mean by the longest sequence. Now, how do we find the longest sequence of ones or zeros? Sometimes the question is made with ones or zeros. It doesn't really matter. It's the same process, right? You always want to look at the structure, at the process, rather than just the details. Because when you have this structure, the process right, then the details can be adapted. Okay, so how do we do this? We can't use this because this only counts individual ones or individual zeros, but we want to count the longest sequence of ones or zeros, one after the other, with no gap in between. Well, we need a different approach. One approach we can take, given that we have a string, is to use a string method. And um, one such method is, let's see if you can guess it. Well, how about scan? So a scan is a method that allows you to use a regular expression a regular expression is a pattern matching language. What are we matching? Well, we're matching ones followed by more ones. That's what this means. So the star means as many ones as possible. Actually, I'm going to make it a plus. because with the star, we get uh, empty um, strings in our output. So let's use a plus. And the difference is that plus means one or more. So we're saying here one or more ones. And now see what happens. We got a new result, a new output, which we can work with. We got an array with all of the sequences of ones. So now it's easier because now that we only have the sequences of ones, we can find out which one is the longest. How can you do that? Is there a method that allows you to find if something is bigger than something else? Or what's the biggest thing inside an array? Well, there is. And that's called max. Ta da! But the question is not only the, the sequence, but uh, the size of the sequence. So, in that case, we can just add a size at the end. And if we use another number, let's try how about this. We can see it's working, right? Because there are three ones. That's the longest sequence of ones. And we get three. So it's working. And we can do the same for zeros simply by changing that 
with this as zero. Okay, so that's the like the medium level for this particular challenge with binary numbers. There is another level that's even a little harder. But you will notice that these levels built in top of another. So we'll be able to use this code to solve the next level. So what is it? Well, here it is. The next level requires the binary form of this number and it wants to find the longest gap between the uh, sequence of ones. No, hold on, hold on. Let, let's do another one. We want to find go by flipping, by changing, go by changing a specific particular byte, a particular bit, every one of these numbers called a bit. Find how by change a particular bit, we can find the, we can make the longest sequence. So what I mean by here, by that, is if we can only change, if we can only change one number, how we can make, what's the longest, um, what's the longest sequence by only changing one number? Well, in here we don't have to change the number because it's already one, but we can change in there, right? And now we have a longer one, we have four. So that's what I mean by this last part of the exercise. So how we do that? Well, one way to do this, of course there are other ways, is to use a loop. So let me clean this up a little bit and let's do So here is the solution for the this more um advanced complicated scenario or challenge. You have the find longest method. It takes the number that we want to work with. In here we convert into binary, which we already already learned how to do with the to s method to string. And then we have a loop. The loop goes from zero to the binary size minus one. And then we use the max by method on that. Because this we give us the biggest index. If we care about the index, if we don't care about the index, we, then we can use map and max. And this will give you the biggest length, the biggest sequence of ones when you are allowed to change one number in the binary number. So again, if you have this, you can either change one here or one here or one here. So if we change one here, that's only three long, three ones long. But if we want add one here, then this becomes even longer. So that's the result, right? And uh, questions often ask, you want the index? So the index means at one point, what, what a specific number you need to change to get the optimal results, the longest possible um, sequence. Or the question might also be, given that you found the index of which one you need to change, then which one is the longest? What's the size of the longest? 
sequence. And for that, we can reuse the code we already had, only that we have to use a binary copy. So why a copy? Because I want to keep the original binary number. The reason for that is that in here I'm changing the string and if I don't want to change it, then I have to copy it. So dupe means duplicate. Uh, every time I go through the loop, I want to be working with the original. So I only change one number, which is part of the challenge of the exercise. So that's how you do this. Hope you found this video helpful and interesting. Please click the like button for me below this video so more people can find it and so more people can benefit from this information. If you want to learn more, watch more of my videos right now on the channel to keep improving your Ruby skills. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and visit my website, rubyguides.com, rubyguides.com. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next video.